This is the third video in my explanation of how non-native speakers can reduce the influence of the patterns from their first language when speaking American English, especially with regard to relaxation of all of the articulators so breath can flow. I recommend that before you watch this video, you stop if you haven't already, go back and watch the first video where I read in French, German, and Spanish so you can see the differences in articulation and what the challenges are migrating to American English. Then practice in your own first language, whether it's Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Chinese, or any other language before continuing to watch the rest of this video. And in addition to that, watch the second video, which talks about the solution, which is to imagine, which I do with you in the second video, that this entire thoracic area, neck area, head area, all of you is getting larger. Now some of you may say, okay, I've done the imagination and I understand the issue, but I'm still not able to do it. And that's what this video is all about. How do you enable change? One last example before I show you. Some of you may speak Chinese. So for example, you might say, and I'll say it the best I can, I know it's not perfect, but in Chinese, someone could say something like, Ni hao ma? Now when I do that, I try to get the tones right, and I realize it's very challenging for me. And one of the reasons it's so challenging is we don't have those kinds of tones in English. We do have pitch, but the pitch is much more free-flowing over an entire utterance that is multiple words. Whereas in Chinese, you have to tightly control each one of those items. They can all have different tones. So how do we release the articulators for Chinese speakers and everyone else, regardless of your first language, provided that it's not American English? And how you do that is to envision that perhaps you're a bit like a bobblehead. And let me demonstrate here with a bobblehead. This is, as you will recognize, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And let's suppose that he wanted to speak with more of an American accent, which he may not. But the idea is, if you look at the traditional bobblehead figure, this is him as the Terminator, a cheap toy that I got years ago. But the idea is that the bobblehead is showing you the neck is free. And it doesn't have to move to this extent, of course not. But you want to make sure that your neck is unencumbered. That is, the neck has no tension, the neck is completely free. I often like to think when I'm driving of being a bobblehead because that has the image, in a sense, ingrained more deeply. So let's now take a look at how that might work in speech. So to do that, we need to relax the entire back of the neck. It moves, think again of the bobblehead. Think again of the imagination of exploring air and breath and getting bigger, larger, consistently growing huge, big, poofing. Think of a big, big balloon. Your entire head and neck is becoming large and everything's lifting up direction away and up if you've studied uh, techniques that talk about posture and breathing. But also the new idea here is not only should you think about that in terms of your body and the, the diaphragm, the back, the legs, the posture, but think of it in terms of the throat and think of it in terms of the mouth. The back of the mouth drops. The neck is first relaxed, then the mouth drops. Now the side movement elongates. The upper and lower movement elongates. And just like a nice big round world, the entire mouth oral cavity opens. And now the nasal cavity opens. And now the entire throat opens and stretches. And now we're just going to speak in American English. Now, if you record yourself, as I've often mentioned you should do, and you find that no change is still occurring, or all of the changes are not incur occurring for you, or perhaps they don't sound natural, then remember the rubber band technique and go back to length. Make sure you're elongating as you breathe and exhale, but always check back that the relaxation is there, there's virtually no effort involved, and that everything is still very large, relaxed, no explicit control. Thinking back to the tonal language where all the control is in place. Release it. Drop the jaw. You can also massage the jaw prior to doing this. But when you're practicing, simply relax everything and simply focus on the breath. Never holding the breath. Inhaling and exhaling as you speak. Now let's try that together. I'm going to practice. Try that again. I'm going to practice. 
with lots of breath. Try a word with an R in it, like fire. And notice that everything can be completely relaxed, filled with breath, elongated and full. But if you do that, you'll get this, fire. Not fire-er, you'll get fire a because the, uh, the R requires tensing the tongue. So if you're completely relaxed, the tongue is intense. Now let's completely relax and say phi. But when you hit the uh, pull the tongue back and tense only the tongue. That is, isolate the tongue. Phi-er, fire, perfection. Now try the word another. The neck is completely relaxed, full, growing, big, all the way to the back of the neck. It's high, it's free, it's reaching. Direction up, out, round, full world. Head is full, open, full of breath, relaxed, completely relaxed, open, no control. Another breath flows. Now let's try again. I'm going to practice with the length and the speech in American English with complete relaxation, even without the band anymore, without the tissue, without all the techniques, but it's simply going to flow naturally. And if that's still a challenge, check in with your shoulder area and make sure you're not doing this. Nothing's tense, nothing's tight, nothing's controlled. Everything's relaxed and everything's larger than life. Enjoy the practice, and I hope to see you soon.